Hello, my name is Robert Smith and I'm part of the application engineering team at M2 Technologies. Today I'm going to show you how to create and place an iPart using Autodesk Inventor 2012. So what is an iPart? Well, it will become clear as we jump into the program, but essentially if you find that a part in your design shares common characteristics with other parts, or if you're designing a family of parts, iParts are the ideal solution for reusing design data and quickly creating multiple parts with subtle variations. A good example is a common bolt. A hex head bolt can come in many variations. The nominal size, the thread spec, the length, and materials may change, but the design intent is the same. Rather than creating a model of each hex head bolt variation in an assembly, what is called an iPart factory can be created. A single part file then can contain every variation you could need. And when the part is placed in an assembly, the variant you need is created instantly. Now I'm going to walk you through a quick example here. We have a simple part. Maybe it's a standoff stud used for support in an assembly. Uh, we know we're going to use these standoffs in many places, but the lengths and diameters are going to vary. Well, there's several ways that we can go about placing these studs in the assembly. We could design a unique part file for each variant we're going to need ahead of time. Uh, we could edit them as needed or while we place them in the assembly by editing the extrusion feature or changing the underlying sketch uh, and save those as unique part files, which in this case it wouldn't be all that bad, but as parts get more complex, that's going to become time consuming. So the best way to go about this is to save time and save effort by making this part an iPart factory. iParts utilize what are called parameters. Parameters are what control your geometry. Dimensions are examples of parameters. If we go to the sketch I used to create the main cylindrical extrusion here, we see I have a dimension for my diameter. I've named this dimension, but this is not necessary to create a parameter. Any time a dimension is placed, it becomes a parameter that we can control elsewhere. But naming them makes them easier to reference later. To name the parameter, just enter an expression when you're entering the value. For example here, diameter equals 1 inch. And we've named the parameter diameter and given it a value of 1 inch. We can do the same thing here in the extrusion. If we open it up, Go into the length. Rather than just placing a value of 6 inches, we can enter length equals 6 inches. That names it and assigns it a value. The process of creating an iPart factory begins on the Manage tab in the Author panel, Create iPart. This brings up the iPart Author dialog box. On the left side, we have a listing of all the parameters we have available to control our part geometry. Notice on the right here, the program has recognized our name parameters and selected them for use automatically. Again, we could have added these manually, but naming them ahead of time has made the process easier and faster. Down here we have the beginnings of our iPart table. The first member is shown, and it's the current configuration of the part. We're going to create what is called a standard iPart factory. This means when we place the part, we have preset part configurations from which to choose. To do this, we must define each member. For each member we want available to us, we must create a row in this table. Right-click anywhere in the table and select Insert Row, then edit the configuration as you see fit. To define which columns are available in each row, select a parameter from the left side and press the arrow key here to add it to the right side. Different parameters and features are available on the tabs at the top. I can go to the Threads tab, for example, and add my thread spec to the table. Or I can go to the Properties tab to add material for control. But in this case, I'm only interested in the length and diameter. So I'm going to remove the part number as well, just for clarity. Once we've completed our table, hit the OK button and exit the iPart Author dialog box, and it's done. Our iPart factory has been created. Notice the symbol in the browser here has changed to reflect this. The part table can be edited at any time by right-clicking here on the browser and selecting Edit Table. But we'll leave it alone for now. 
I will save this part and we'll go and observe the behavior as we place it in an assembly. Start a new assembly here. We place our part. When we do so, the place standard iPart dialog box comes up. And since this is a standard iPart factory, the easiest way to go about this, since there's not that many variations, is to go over to the table tab where a table shows every possible variation available to us. Simply select one and insert the part. And as you can see, the geometry is created automatically. Now real quick here, I want to show you the behavior of a custom iPart factory. So we'll go back to my iPart, edit the iPart table. I'm going to get rid of these configurations. Right click on the diameter column and select custom parameter column. Now what this is doing is making this a custom iPart factory. When it's placed, I can enter any value that I want for the diameter column. All the rest of the geometry is going to stay as defined. So we'll hit OK and save that. Go back to the assembly. Now, as you can see, when I place it, I can enter any value here for diameter that I want. So I'm going to enter 0.75 inches and place the part. Notice now, though, that my chamfer and hole size are a bit large relative to the diameter of the part. We're not going to get into it here, but this is where we would need to build in additional controls. Uh, we could, for example, specify an allowable range that the designer could enter for the diameter to prevent it from going too small or too large. Or you can start to develop what are called iLogic rules, which is basic programming uh, that would dynamically adjust the chamfer and hole size based on the entered value for diameter. Uh, I, that's just a taste of, of the power of this functionality. Uh, by no means would this make you an expert on the I part as a deep functionality. Um, but I wanted to point it out to you, and I encourage you to look into it further and have fun with it.